Hello students, uh, this is Dr. Abdallah. I, 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 I am here to talk to you. I, I would like first of all to thank you and congratulate you for the commitment and dedications you have exhibited throughout this course since we started. I am here again to talk about your continuous assessments. Uh, you know that the university policy requires, the university grading policy requires that um, you have, uh, you are assessed and graded uh, in the CA, continuous assessments, which is out of 30 marks. And then you also have to do the quizzes, uh, the assignments, which is on 20. Uh, marks, and then you are required to also participate and discuss in class uh, and attend your classes or all your classes uh, up to 85% uh, so that you are eligible to participate and, uh, and sit for end of semester exams. So today I am here to talk about your CA, your continuous assessment. Uh, this is a project, you know, the, the purpose of uh, this course is to train you uh, not only on the theoretical aspects of research, but also on the practical skills of conducting uh, research. So we have trained you on so many skills uh, in this course. We have trained you intelligence tools like Quillbot to paraphrase and uh, also write in, a, in, in, in an academic and scholarly manner. We have also taught you how to use uh, referencing uh, tools like Botello, Mendeley, Endnote uh, to reference and cite your work. We have also taught you how to design uh, online uh, surveys uh, for data collection and also to interpret and discuss your results. So in this CA, I know that I, in all the talks, the all of this week, I, I was talking about how to develop a survey, how to de design a data collection tool or a, that, a research instrument. And I was also talking about instrumentation, the process that a researcher goes through to design a research instrument. We put so much, we understood that there are many research instruments, um, and, and, and this depends, the design and development of a research instrument entirely depends on your research questions and objectives. If you, and, and the type of data you intend to, to collect, you know, we are talking about qualitative data, quantitative data, uh, and we said quantitative data is numerical data which deals with uh, numbers, and we have specific tools that we use to collect such data. We also have a quantitative data which is more of a, uh, words, opinions, and uh, expressions of respondents. It is not quantifiable. We also have tools that we design to collect such data. Now, our main focus here is the uh, quantitative data that we will collect through a survey that we are going to develop uh, using uh, Google Forms. This is uh, an, an online a survey which we developed using Google Forms to send to our target respondents so that they can fill and provide us with the data. So in class, I taught you how to develop a survey. If you did not attend the class, or if I missed a point in any of these classes, I will do a video on how to develop a survey using Google Forms. 
Now, you, this is the requirement for your exam. You are, no, not for your exam, your CA. Uh, you are required to, to uh, what, what you are going to do in this assignment. This is uh, a continuation of what you are already doing in class. You know that in class, we have uh, tasked you to use your research area, to write about your research problem, to write your research problem, to write your research objectives, thesis, and also to draft uh, surveys that follow the guidelines of your research objectives. We have taught you this. We have shown this to you in the class classrooms, and we are sure and we know may probably that you can do it well. Now, you you are going to develop a survey, but the survey should have one dependent variable and one independent variable. Probably I've not talked about uh, variables because uh, I don't think this is the the, the uh, the level where we want to go so deep into variables. Uh, but you know that uh, a topic, like I was saying in class, has um, a good topic, has these two variables. I was hiding the word and calling it directions, two parts that are in the topic. One depends on the other. One aspect influences the other. I used the example of uh, robotics to give also in Cameroon, when we said robotics is one aspect and disease control is another aspect. So robotics, use of robotics influences disease control or in, in, in Cameroon, meaning that uh, the dependent variable there is disease control, uh, which depends entirely on the use of uh, robotics. So we will discuss more about this when get to class. So you will, your question, your topic, we saw, we saw that most of your topics, as I was trying to review some of your topics in class, don't have this uh, requirement, this aspect, so we, we need to resist it and have very good topics. Now it means that each aspect, you are going to develop 10 questions to, 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 to help you answer, I mean to to have a good understanding of each of those two aspects. Uh, for robotics use, I will have 10 questions for that. And for disease control in Cameroon, also 10 questions for that. So I, I, I think that you should have your topic in that direction, where you have a total of 20 questions on your survey. And each question item you are going to develop from that survey will use a close-ended answer choice using the Lackett scale of strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, and strongly disagree. So you will create your survey online as seen in class. You will create it using Google Forms. I have a procedure here for those that are new on uh, Google Forms, I mean Google services. You must have a Google account and uh, to join, to have this account is entirely free. And you follow the instructions so that they get you, uh, you get an account. Once you have an account, you can be able to access all these services, including Google Drive, uh, Google Forms, Google Sheets, and all that. But our focus here is uh, Google Forms. So you will certainly uh, uh, design it, and when you have finished, in you, the changes are automatically saved to as post as you design this. I'll show you practically when you click send and it will ask how you like to correct your responses. When you say through a link, there are many ways you can correct your responses through an email or you can correct your responses through generating a link that you can send to the respondents. In this case, we'd like you to send to 50 uh, uh, of your targeted respondents so that they can answer uh, your questionnaire. The students in this aspect were asking, Doc, where do we get the respondents? Sincerely, if 
you don't know how you will access, you have your data corrected, uh, then you need to rethink on this aspect. You can't say you want to do a research and you don't know how you will correct your data. Your data must be accessible, easy to correct. So you must know those target um, respondents or people, uh, if you have collect data from humans, that would you will uh, send the instrument to do the survey so that they answer it and provide you with the data. So since you are students and you don't know how to get this, I was talking about research communities and social media. You may be doing uh, a topic in uh, on farming. Um, you have a topic on farming and then you want to, maybe your target respondents are farmers. You, you, you can go to the, to the internet and find a research community of scholars that have done um, uh, uh, a, 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 a similar topic and they, they, will sh they will share with you their experiences on how you can access the respondents, you know. So this is on your part. Now, once that is done and you have your data, uh, you are going to write a report. The report is um, going to show your survey's results. When you log into Google Forms and you click Responses, you will be able to see your results. Now, once you have these results, you copy and paste these results in your work, in your Microsoft Word document. I will be demonstrating this in my next video so that you are able now to write and draw conclusions and recommendations on what is coming out of uh, the data. The beauty about Google Forms is that it can give you uh, a, gra a graphical uh, representation of your findings. You, you may find that uh, uh, Google Forms has, has already generated uh, automat uh, automatically uh, uh, pie charts and uh, graphs which you can just take and uh, try to look at uh, what uh, w uh, the trend and the direction of your results. So you're going to write uh, something like uh, five paragraphs, five paragraphs or three paragraphs. So what you are really going to write here in the first paragraph is a recap of what you are trying to find out in this project. You have already done this. If you have been following, this is what you wrote at the beginning, the purpose of your, your research. You have your objectives you wrote about and why you think uh, this is appropriate and what, what, what should, what, why should people, you are giving your justifications for conducting this study. Why should people be interested in this topic and your results? That's uh, an introduction opportunity in one paragraph. Then in the second paragraph, you present now your results. Uh, your results should be uh, the most popular and least popular answers given for each of the question items that you had uh, on your survey, on your variables on your survey. Report uh, the percentages of respondents who provided these answers and try to look at the dependent and independent variables. Put uh, the answers of uh, the independent variable in one paragraph, and then the results of the dependent 